Um, on to our last, my last interview of the morning. It is that time of the year, um, and I'm past it now because my boys, well, past school, but for hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of New Zealanders, school is back in from next week and primary, uh, intermediate, college, uh, school, people start to drip back to school and dribs and drabs over the next two weeks. Um, kids hate it. Parents breathe a sigh of relief. But with it comes a whole lot of challenges. And I think one would fairly say that schools and scholastic stuff has been in trouble over the last few years in New Zealand. Truancy at an all-time high. Uh, I think woke new syllabuses that are pretty bad for kids. But an economic squeeze on. And the cost of getting kids back into uniforms and buying all the books is going to be this year more than any other an uphill hill struggle for many. So how do you, how does your family get ready for getting the kids back to school? And how might, well, schools help and communities help people in that situation? Um, we talk to this guy often. I think he's got a real um, gritty frontline view of education. He is the um, Titai Tokarao, uh Principals Association President, Pat Newman. He joins us now. Pat, uh, kia ora, good morning. Lovely to see you again. How are you? Uh, kia ora, Sean. I'm, I'm rearing to go. Another, I think it must be 42nd year or something of this starting up, and uh, the uh, the body might be a bit older, but the brain's still going. All right. Uh, so we've got, we've got hundreds of thousands of kids heading back to school in the next couple of weeks, right, all over the country. Yep. We got, Hopefully, we've got tens and tens and tens and tens of them, you know, keep going past the 100,000. Yeah. Uh, and also, we've got teachers who get very, very generous holidays. They finally have to kind of come back from the <laughs> beach, uh, get off their asses and do some work. But, look, it's, it's a really interesting time. I still remember my first day at school at five, and I can remember that feeling of depression at the end of the summer holidays when you had to go back and get into it. But also... And I was lucky enough in my life that by the time my kid was going to school, we had enough money not to, to stress about it. I can remember my mum, who was a solo mum, um, looking and cursing under her breath as she saw what the uniform was and, you know, uh, buying all the, all the stuff you needed for school. I imagine these days people have got to buy computers or Kindles or all sorts of gear. And I imagine that this is increasingly a problem for a large number of parents of school kids in New Zealand. Yeah, sure, it is, but it shouldn't be. There's a lot of help out there that's available and, and it's good to have this opportunity. So hopefully your listeners will, uh, that, that need this knowledge will, will ask. The, the first thing is that um, if we're talking stationary, because we've got to look at the different parts, if you look at stationary, there's a huge number of schools, primary in particular, who have got funding, they call it the, the, the donations funding from the ministry. Yeah. And we get that on condition that we do not charge the children for stationary or anything. Yeah. And they, for instance, at my school, all stationary is free. Wow. All trips are free. No, yeah. well, we get we get the funding from the government to do this, right? When we had donations, we'd get a couple of thousand dollars a year. We now get about sixty, so we can pay for all of those sort of things. So no stationary worries. If they are, as, they should go firstly to their school. And I know sometimes people feel fakama. Mm. Um, uh, for they people they who can. don't speak Maori, that means shame. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Shame. Um, hopefully people will now learn to lesson in Mali, but that's good. Yeah. Um, the school should be there to set up, and if, if they feel treated badly, then I would be um, suggesting they give some, a sort of a two-fingered salute to the school. Mm. The Ministry of Education has a thing called emergency resource funding, mm -hmm. and that's available at times like this. And that they just need to ring their local ministry office and ask for someone to talk to about that. Mm. The um, the wins itself will advance money, but you've got to pay it back, and it's a bit of a pain. Um, but 
schools often also have um, old clothes. I don't yep. mean old in the way of worn out, yeah. but recycled. Clothes. Yeah, recycled you clothes know. or gifted clothes. Yeah, repurposed clothes. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it's funnily enough, one of the, you know, I went to Nelson College, which was kind of a semi-private boarding school. I wore a suit on Sundays that was from a guy called TJ Topless who went to Nelson College in 1957 and we had what was called, um, was it the suit shop or the clothing shop and it recycled school uniforms yeah. for the boarding guys and everything. Yeah. And my, no jacket, in that. My, suit, yeah, my suit jackets when I went through St. Pat's and Timaru were all recycled through somebody else. Yeah, and there's you know, no shame in that for kids, but I mean, I suppose in the designer label era that kids live in now, kids might feel bad about it, but it's not the end of the world, is it? Well, the ones we're talking with who are really needing help, I don't think that's a matter of concern. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but it, I don't want people to, to, to have that strain because the school itself, like we would, if people came to us and said, we've got a problem, well, we'll find the money. We, we Yeah. You know, up here in the north, most schools are on the donation scheme. Yeah. Look, and, the other thing you know, is, Pat, on this, the enforcement of, of uniform rules, um, and I once again remember slightly earlier before Nelson College um, being just terrified of having the wrong uniform, and to be honest, Mum wasn't in a position where she always put the name tags on and stuff. I felt an incredible pressure about that. Schools too, I would hope, in this day and age, are not going to be Nazis about enforcing um, uniform codes or saying you haven't got that piece of uniform, it doesn't comply, is there a problem, and doing that subtly or dealing with that subtly and sensitively. Yeah, look, I, I agree, mate. I used to be in fear of, of having my socks up, if you remember those yeah, days. Yeah. Um, but people have to be realistic now, and if a kid is not got full uniform, that's an indication that the family might be needing some help, to be honest. Yeah. Um, some of the schools have, in my view, some archaic, um, well, I'll put a bloody ridiculous um, <laughs> rule for uh, That'll do uniforms. That, yeah. yeah. And, and I suspect they might be better off going to another school. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we look at, if, the, if we don't have a uniform at school, we provide a lot of clothing um, along with about $18,000 last year in food vouchers and different things like that. I even bought two cattle beasts we gave out to people as mints. Um, but we notice if kids have got problems. We notice if kids don't have kai, you know, we, even though we provide it. And that's what the school should be doing. Yeah. Look, the other thing I wanted to talk about, Pat, we know that truancy, particularly through COVID, has been a real problem. Is there anything at the start of the school year right now that is going to improve that in the year 2023 or do we still need to come up with strategies or new strategies to deal with that this year? Because it's a massive problem. If you miss out as a young person on education, if you, if you fall off the conveyor belt of education, it's damn hard to get back on and it affects the rest of your life. Yeah, look, um, we won't know till the kids are back. You know, yeah. and, and and we're not starting till the seventh of February because all our kids are up at Waitangi. Yeah. Um, but last year, for instance, up here we had a strategy. We got up to about eighty-five, nearly ninety percent attendance. That's right. That's right. We talked about uh, that last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's something everywhere can look at. It. You need a strategy. You need a strategy in your school. You need a strategy um, within the sector groups, and that's probably the hardest of the whole lot is getting other government departments to actually yeah. think laterally. Um, and and you've got to have a strategy within your region, mm. and it's got to be a combined one. And it's got to be one that's no use going out and saying, "I'm going to see, I'm going to find you," mm. because <laughs> there's no money. Yeah. Yeah. You've you got to, what is the cause? And it actually is involving knocking on doors with a person saying, hey, I'm here to help. What mm. do you need? Yeah. Finally, Pat, have you got a message for nervous five-year-olds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could say there's a hell of a lot of nervous teachers too. But, yeah. Uh, hey, it's going to be fun. Yeah, you know, and it, it should be, education should be fun. Pat, always a joy speaking I'm, to you, my friend. I wish you the best for the year. I'm sure we will talk again. Okay, Sean. Hey, but, hey listen, just one thing. I just want to mention 
the death of a, a very, very important person up here, Titify. Yeah. And yeah, we've yeah, got I... at, uh, one of her grandchildren at school. She's one of an era and will never see the same You again, will not see her like again. And I have had my run-ins and my uh, um, really interesting conversations with Titify over the year. And thinking of Hono and the rest of the whanau uh, today, that is, yeah, that's a, a big total of falling in the forest. Absolutely, my friend. Uh, I thank you for your time today, and, and thanks for reminding me of that yeah. too, Pat. Cheers. Um, all right, that is Tiktai Toka, our Principals Association President, Pat Newman. And, yeah, um, Titify Harawera, man, she could... Uh, Call it like she saw it. I didn't always agree with her. Many New Zealanders didn't, but she had the courage of her convictions. And indeed, her entire family, something of firebrands. Something of firebrands, and we need them. We need them. Um, and to defy Harawea has passed away. Uh, that will be a big loss. Um, a big loss to her family and friends and thoughts with you, uh, Hone, uh, and to the brothers and sisters and cousins and all involved.